My name is Morad Montazami. I'm a curator, a publisher, and also an art historian. This exhibition is the first chapter uh, from a three-chapter project, which is called Cosmic Roads Relocating Modernism, with Hamed Abdallah for the first chapter. So Hamed Abdallah was a self-taught artist from a very modest, you could say a peasant family um, in Upper Egypt. It's very interesting the way he could make the different steps towards an artistic career without going through the Cairo Fine Art School. He, he was someone who built up himself. Still, he was trained in calligraphy at a very, very young age in a Quranic school in Cairo. Uh, and also a very brief time in the, in the School of Applied Arts in Cairo, but very briefly. He's an artist who really created his own network through Egyptian galleries since the 40s and the 50s, when most of the Egyptian galleries were run by French-speaking elites, and also outside of Egypt, as he was able to connect with cities like Paris, like London, and like Amsterdam since the 50s, the beginning of the 50s, and circulate his work in those different places. His paintings themselves come to get that feel of signs or words or letters or mottos that eventually on the painting find an experimental uh, manifestation but still on a conceptual level uh, can be taken as a statement, as something that everybody can relate somehow through the translation of that Arabic word. So Hamed Abdallah is actually a key artist in order to understand not only the issue of the artist's identity as an Egyptian slash Arab slash Mediterranean and a cosmopolitan Arab identity, but also because he, he was particularly active in connecting artists with each other and he actually documented his own artistic practice and trajectory at the same time that he was documenting other artists' trajectories and practices. Actually, Hamed Abdallah had exhibited once in London with his wife of the time, Tahya Halim, who was also an important Egyptian modernist. But he never had a solo show, and he never had a show after he passed away in the 80s, uh, happening in the UK. It's nice to be able to exhibit Abdallah in a context that's combining the modern and the contemporary, uh, and I guess not too far from his uh, 1951 exhibition at, at the London Egyptian Institute. So the works that we chose for the exhibition were again based on the principle of an imaginary alphabet, an alphabet of his own, which we related with the title Arabe Seder. For that reason, we chose six words, or you could say six statements. One is L for lovers, the other one is N for Nubia, the Egyptian region where he used to travel to inspire from the landscape and also the murals uh, in traditional houses in Nubia. Then we have R for revolution that will explore most of his pan-Arab and broadly post-colonial encounters in an anti-imperialist context of his time. Then we'll have C for caves Caves, or you could say grottos, as he was passionate for these uh, geological spaces and landscapes, either French prehistoric grottos or the Nubian rocks, as we referred previously. So, C like caves. And then we will have L like letterism. Letterism is a way to designate a trend or a stream of aesthetic concerns 
that has to do with the representation of the letter or to base your formal experiment on a certain set of units that can function as an alphabet. So that's why L for letterism. Uh, and then finally K for clay. K for clay as Paul Clay in order to explore his debate and his sort of artistic dialogue with Western modernism, not only Western modernism per se, but Western modernism as it appropriated some Oriental or Arab influences, as we all know, in Paul Klee's, in Kandinsky, in Matisse, 